Hi, everybody. It's Julie calling, Julie calling, Julie uh, coming to you um, from Facebook Live. I am the programs manager at the PMFRC, and I am here with you for another fireside chat. Uh, for those of you who have joined us before, you know that this is a live presentation, and we encourage you uh, to get involved. Uh, if, as we are going along, you come up with a question or something that you would like one of our panelists to expand on, we encourage you to put that in the comments. We are going to be watching that as we go. Um, and we will get back to you at the end of the session. Also, if there is something that you would like to talk to us about and you're catching a recording of this, you can't watch it live, still put those comments um, down We and we will follow up with you afterwards. Um, today we're talking about Bell Let's Talk, we're talking about mental health issues and we're talking about the FBAT team um, at Garrison Petawawa. Sometimes um, when we have these discussions, maybe some of the comments or questions that you have may be a little bit personal and you may not feel comfortable putting that in the comment section. Please feel free to send us a direct message um, and we will make sure that we attach you or hook you up with the right person. Um, we're also going to be sharing a number of email addresses and website links. So as we hear from our different panelists, you'll find ways of reaching to them directly. Um, so check afterwards if you have missed someone's email address or if you've missed um, a link that they have shared, that's going to be in the comments afterwards. So be nice and easy to follow. Uh, before we start, I'm just going to do a quick round table and introduce the folks that we have joining us today. Uh, Chris Quigley is joining us. She is the Family Transition Advisor here. Um, Lieutenant Ashley Jones is the Acting Chair of the FBAT Committee, and she's going to tell us, we're going to hear more about what that is. Uh, Jancy Brown is joining us from the Women's Sexual Assault Center of Renfrew County. Thank you, Jancy, for coming. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Ian Clark is the Commanding Officer of Personnel Services at Garrison Petawawa. Claudia Beswick is the Executive Director of the PMFRC. Uh, Kevin Strachan is joining us from Health Promotions and he's going to be talking to us about Bell Let's Talk and he even has the fancy swag on. Um, and Paul Henry is joining us from Family and Children's Services of Renfrew County. Thank you all uh, for being here. We have been very fortunate since uh, these fireside chats have started um, that so many members of the community have come and to, to talk to us and talk about the services that are available. Um, we really wanted to give everybody a good picture um, of the resources that were still available that they could access uh, during these times. And I think that um, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the services that were available from other community partners. Claudia, before we kick off, um, we always talk about business resumption. Do you have an update for us about what's happening at the PMFRC? Yeah, first though, Julie, I'd like to just welcome everybody. You know, all MFRCs really work within the communities to raise awareness about the unique stressors that military families and members are dealing with. And our collective impact really is significant, significant and it really identifies what the stressors and barriers are. Um, that they're dealing with on an ongoing basis. So there is a link between all of our organizations with uh, shared values and working together draws awareness of all the great work that is being done and all the services that are available for the CAF family. So thanks to everyone for participating with us today. With regard to um, any changes to MFRC services, we are still pretty much status quo from last week. The only thing that has really changed was the specialized emergency child care program that we ran out of the Southside Community Center is now closed because schools have reopened this week. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people happy about that. Other than that, there's nothing new to report, um, but I do want to take this opportunity to share a couple of great things that are coming up. On the 2nd of February, we're hosting our Deployment Services Forum, so we've had a couple of them now. Um, this one on the 2nd of Feb, starting at 6.30 in the evening, will run to 8.30. It's uh, an event um, that we put on uh, as much as, as often as we can, hopefully annually. And then this year, like many of the things that we've had to do, um, we've taken it virtual. So if you are a partner of a CAF member, and that could be a spouse, a girlfriend, a parent, whoever is significant to that CAF member, we would really like to hear from you. Um, what are the issues, what are the barriers uh, that are related to the deployment that you're dealing with? We're really looking at getting your perspective on the services and supports that you would like to see from the PMFRC. This is uh, an open space format, so the focus will be on the topics that matter to you, uh, to the family member, and participants can choose from a variety of discussion groups, there's mental, uh, mental performance during deployment, dealing with the deployment for those with kids, and dealing with the deployment for those without kids. 
So um, check out the website. Uh, I think it's a great way for the families dealing with deployment. And even if you um, have just finished dealing with the deployment or you have a deployment coming up, all of that information matters. It's really important that we um, can accommodate what it is that you're looking for. And as much as we possibly can, we will look at doing that. Uh, still on the topic of deployment, Morale Mail is still accessible at the north side. It uh, continues to be very popular. So thanks to the base for continuing to support that. It is a touchless process. Um, there's a trolley just outside of the entrance door on the ramp. Um, you drop off your parcel and make sure that it's completely um, filled out and wrapped and ready to go. And then um, staff, the information services assistant will check the front and bring your parcels in after that. Uh, information referral services are ongoing. We do have the assistant working in the front desk, answering emails and phones. So make sure you give us a call. We often say no door is the wrong door. So reach out to us if you have any questions, if you're looking for any resources. If we're not able to help, we'll facilitate that warm handover to whichever organization is best um, able to assist you in whatever it is that you need. And that's Thank it. You. Thank you, Claudia. I'm going to put a link uh, in the comments later for Morale Mail, just so uh, you understand and have, before you show up with your parcel, um, you know how it has to be wrapped and how it has to be addressed and that maybe save you a trip so you have it all ready to go when you drop it off on that cart later on. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Clark, thank you for joining us. You, uh, you are, I, you sit on the FAT committee and I, we toss the acronym around and I must admit, even I have to look it up every time we talk about FAT. I know it is what is a, as a concept, um, can you talk about why FVAT, the FVAT team exists um, on, at Garrison, Petawawa, and why it's so important? Certainly. So um, I'm the sort of champ, champion for the FVAT team, and uh, it stands for the Family Violence Advisory Team. Um, now, family violence is a, is a tough, tough subject, uh, and it's certainly a scary word. Um, but the point is that it's an advisory team. It brings together uh, experts in the field, practitioners from a wide range of, of areas, and they work as a group to uh, support families, uh, to support members, but also to, uh, to support the chain of command. Uh, privacy is always assured though. Uh, I'll just put it out there. Um, although we talk about family violence and that's in the title, it's really about healthy relationships. And we talk about a spectrum. And uh, although we can certainly help if things have gotten very, very bad, um, we can also help if things are just trending in a bad way. And uh, there's some great tools out there and some amazing resources uh, that, that can be accessed for people to, to make sure that they do have a healthy relationship. And I'll just start by saying, I, I doubt there is a perfect relationship out there. That's not to say we're all having bad relationships, but um, there are no perfect relationships and folks can have bad days. And the idea is to be able to recognize if things are trending in the wrong direction um, and then find, find ways to get back to the green. And there's lots of support out there so you don't, have, you don't have to go alone. And as Claudia said, uh, there is no wrong door. There are many doors in the FAT that folks can access. And uh, you know, I'd say the sooner someone realizes perhaps that, hey, I, I'd like to get some support and they know who to reach out to, the better I think the, out, the outcome will be. And uh, the door will always be open. So uh, without that, so with that, I'll turn it over to Ashley uh, as the team lead, but I just want to put in one point that is not related to the FAT about COVID, uh, just to riff on what Claudia said there. Hey, thanks for the morale mail. I think we had 100 kilos last week, which is amazing. Um, and uh, on COVID, I know everyone, um, they're tired of COVID. Um, the base is still essentially closed to visitors. Uh, we're at very reduced staffing because of the Ontario lockdown. Uh, we have a, a bi-weekly steering committee that I chair with the unit chains of command of, of the garrison where we sit down for an hour and a half and we talk about COVID and we talk about policies and we talk about access and we talk about rinks and we talk about trails and work. Um, over Christmas, we had one every week because the situation was changing ev every week. So we do cooperate on this. Um, if, if families ever have questions in the middle of the night, um, our garrison Facebook page does have some in, info on it about COVID policies. And if you really need to know something, your best bet is always to go to chain of command because they'll have access to that, um, to that in info as well. Uh, Sorry, without further, sorry, yeah, Julie. I'm gonna put the link to the uh, Garrison Facebook page um, in the comment section. So it's nice and easy to find them and to follow them. 
Um, and also before we move over to Ashley, uh, you talked briefly about the healthy relationship spectrum. Um, I have a link to that that I can share just so people have a better idea of sort of what that spectrum looks like um, and sort of determining with by themselves or maybe when discussion with their partner about where they are on that spectrum and, uh, and what they would like to do to sort of move um, towards the green, as you said. Um, Ashley, thank you for joining us, Lieutenant Jones. Um, you are the acting chair of the, uh, of the committee. Um, and the committee it, it includes a lot of Garrison Petawawa personnel, as you would imagine, but there's also a lot of community partners and there's a collaboration there. Can you talk about why that collaboration is so important and what the community brings to the committee? Yeah, of course. Um, I'll first introduce myself. I'm Lieutenant Ashley Jones, and I'm the acting uh, psychosocial team lead at Warrior Support right now um, and the Family Violence Advisory Team Acting Chair. Um, I'm going to just start by introducing some of our members um, right now that sit on the on the FAT team. Um, so, of course, we have Lieutenant Colonel Clark. Um, he's the commanding officer, personal services. Hello, sir. Um, uh, we, we do have um, a padre that's, uh, that sits on our team as well. Um, we have Claudia Beswick. She's the PMFRC executive director. Hello, Claudia. Uh, Chris Quigley, who's the family transition advisor. Um, we have Dana Lawson, health promotions manager at PSP. Uh, Jancy Brown, um, who's from the Women's Sexual Assault Center. Um, Paul Henry uh, from Family and Children's Services of Renfrew County. Um, Michael Bradbury, um, who is probation and parole. Um, Faye Cassista uh, from Victim Services of Renfrew County. Um, and Ashley Werner, who's the Victim Services Coordinator. Um, and Nancy Seclair, who is a social worker at Garrison Petawawa. So these are folks right now who kind of make up our, our um, FAT group. Um, so as already highlighted, there were some community partners that I mentioned, but to highlight it, we, we have community partners such as the Bernadette McGann House, um, the w Women's Sexual Assault Center of Renfrew County, Victim Services of Renfrew County, um, Family and Child Services, and then Probation and Parole. So that kind of highlights some of our community partners and our, and our team um, as it sits right now. So collaboration partnership, this has been a super important aspect of um, our family advisory, our family violence advisory team. Um, you know, the involvement of all these community partners really increases our capabilities to support CAF members and their families to address their family concerns. Um, so in, in this collaboration, it's definitely a powerful tool um, to ensuring that we support members and their families um, by tapping into the available resources in the community. Um, I just want to highlight that EFFET takes a collaborative and community approach um, to supporting our members and their families. Um, so I guess it's the best way to say it is each member, each community um, program and a representative, they're a piece of the puzzle. And um, in coming together, we get to um, provide better care for our folks. Um, so um, we all work together in just navigating how we can support people in working towards better and healthy relationships. So that's kind of how, why, and how collaboration is super important for us at the FAT team. Thank you so much. Um, Chris, can, do you want to talk about what your role is on the team? Sure. So I'm kind of uh, like a connector. As Claudia said, no uh, door is the wrong door. So when families find themselves in difficult situations, whether it be through uh, their relationships or struggling with other mental health pieces, they often uh, get frustrated with not knowing where to go. So if they come through um, the Family Advocacy Office through the MFRC, then we can help navigate whether or not families need some uh, mental health Perhaps they're looking for some support in uh, a situation where partners have been separated and there are financial issues that need to be taken care of, some childcare issues, or perhaps it's a situation where uh, a, a, a family member is having difficulty with housing and they have no idea where to go. Well, I can be the connector to get those family folks uh, connected to the folks like Bernadette McCann House, like Jancy over at the Sexual Assault Center, like Paul at Family and Children's Services. So it's, I'm uh, often people refer to me as the human phone book because I'm able to navigate where they need to go without getting, getting frustrated 
or trying to identify how um, they're going to get what they need because of the situation that they find themselves in. The other piece of the uh, uh, role that I play in terms of the family um, uh, violence uh, advisory team is knowing that if any of the unit um, chains of commands need any support, they can also come through me and I can help navigate where they need to go in terms of getting the right uh, door open uh, for their members, whether that be housing, whether that be uh, referring over to Ashley and her team over at uh, Garrison Mental Health. Because sometimes when situations arise and the, the situation's not going the best and, and potentially um, folks are frustrated and they just don't know where to go, having one person to kind of navigate those pieces for them makes things a whole lot easier. And a situation that did look difficult might not be so difficult if we can help them say, get a, a, a cab ride to a court appointment or get them over to intake at um, Garrison Mental Health because they're the soldier side. So technically we deal with the family side uh, and support the soldier side by referring them over to each of the unit pieces and then to Garrison Mental Health. So a connector, a good connector. So often when people find themselves in, in, a, in a situation or a difficulty, they feel very alone. Like they're the only people who have ever been there. Um, and having somebody like Chris who knows the, knows the system, knows the people, knows who is in the community to help, um, it saves so much aggravation and so much stress uh, that you, and maybe gives you a little back, a little bit of bandwidth that you, you can sort of use to sort of keep yourself healthy uh, because some of those pieces can be put in place very easily by Chris rather than you having to start from scratch. So thank you, Chris. No problem. Um, Jancy, thank you so much for joining us. You are from the Women's Sexual Assault Center of uh, Renfrew County. Um, as the, the name would imply, you deal with a lot of people who are in crisis, you deal with a lot of people who are in that transition process, but uh, the Women's Sexual Assault Center also has so many great resources and workshops uh, and things that you offer the community. Can you talk about some of those other services that might be available? Sure. Um, thanks for having me here today. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to connect with the wider community. Um, the Sexual Assault Centre, uh, the main piece that we do is we offer support to folks um, who have survived sexual violence any time in their lifespan. So I think that's a really key piece. A lot of people think that you have to come right away, but the majority of the work we do is actually historical. So it doesn't matter. Whenever you've experienced that sexual violence, you can come forward and talk about it. We also support your the survivor's support network. So you're never alone. If you're there supporting a friend or family member, you can give us a call and we can help you through that too, to know what to say and how to be helpful. Um, one key piece we have is a 24 hour, uh, seven day a week crisis line, uh, which is 1-800-663-3060. And uh, you just, you give us a call and we're there for you. And whether it's referral or whether you just want someone to talk to, or you can't get to sleep in the middle of the night because of what's happened, we're just there for you to be, for the moment to be there so you can get through that crisis. Uh, some of the exciting things we do um, for the base, um, for Garrison, is we have a rapid access program now for um, the wider CAF community. So that's um, members, their families, uh, and employees that are connected to the uh, Garrison Petawawa. And it kind of puts you on a priority list if you're requiring services that you can get access to um, support within 24 hours and we can get you into some uh, counseling type supports within 48 hours, but usually it's within that 24. So you're not having to wait in a long, a long wait list or anything like that, you're prioritized, which I think is really important, um, especially when there's so many deployments and members are away that you wanna know that you have access to supports immediately when you actually need it. Uh, some of the other trainings that we offer are uh, a disclosure training, uh, both for community members, but also units can uh, book the, the uh, disclosure training. It's a three hour training that we can break up into sessions that are smaller if need be because of Zoom, uh, which offers uh, community members that are taking it uh, an insight of maybe what sexual violence can look like. What does intimate partner violence look like? How can we intercede or uh, intercept some of those things in our community? How do we um, end some of the conversations that you that we know are not healthy and how do we support someone who feels safe enough to talk to us because it's a real honor to, that someone feels safe enough to share some of the most intimate and horrific things that have happened to them and how are you equipped to be there to support them 
And then how do you take care of yourself if you're hearing all these things and it's not your job? So that is one uh, course that's really popular that we offer. Um, and like I said, it can either be by units or it can be done by community or we can connect it through the PMFRC for registration. And right now they're all online. Uh, the other one that we're really focusing on is self-care. Uh, self-care is always an important piece, you know, and that's what we're talking about mental health and self-care today. Um, and it's even more so right now with COVID because we're trapped and often can't use some of the same techniques that we used to use that worked beforehand because of our limitations. And this one hour course kind of opens our minds to what self-care can look like. How do we incorporate it into our daily lives? And maybe what are some uh, practices that we've never considered? as being self-care, that we can kind of increase the scope of what our self-care can look like to take care of our whole selves, not just one aspect of ourselves. Uh, and I'm also available uh, now for the base uh, two days a week. We have money to be able to support and to do uh, work with the garrison um, 16 hours a week. So uh, anything that you kind of need or workshops, maybe if any units are looking for, we can custom anything that kind of works for the needs of the group at the moment. Thank you so much, Jancy. Um, we are going to share the website for the Women's Sexual Assault uh, Center um, a little below in the comments. We're also going to give you the link so you can follow on Facebook and stay up to date about any courses or upcoming workshops. Um, and I also took down the number for that 24-7 uh, uh, crisis hotline and we will post that as well. It's an important number to keep, um, whether you might need it one day or someone you love might need it one day. Um, it's, a, it's important to know it so you have that information when you need it. Um, Paul Henry, you are here. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what your role is about the family and child services representative um, at Garrison Petawawa and the kinds of things that you do? You're on mute. <laughs> My apologies, hey, thank you. No problem. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I appreciate this and um, um, I, I appreciate being part of the Family Violence Advisory Team and the support we receive from the chain of command. Um, Family and Children's Services of Renfrew County is the, um, the Children's Aid Society for Renfrew County. But we are also a multi-service agency. So we provide services for folks who have developmental service needs, um, child protection, the, the children's aid component of it, um, family support programs, infant development, um, family visitation and exchange services, early on childhood, uh, early on child and family centers. So our, our agency is a multi-service agency. My role specifically is to help with the early intervention of children that may have been at risk of harm or may have been harmed and to conduct investigations and joint investigations with the military police or with the, um, uh, the, local, the local police um, and help families try to resolve the and, and prevent the situation that led to them becoming um, involved with our agency. Um, it's important for the earlier, the earliest intervention um, to prevent things from becoming more uh, exploding. And if, if people are having difficulties, reach out. The notion of reaching out for help is seen as a strength, not a weakness learning the skills such that you can meet the needs of your children and have a healthier relationship with your children and your spouse. Um, that's the goal. And, and that leads to us, uh, you know, to, uh, to a stronger, uh, a stronger family. And if the, the member can, can focus on their job out in the field, knowing that their family is being supported back home, then they can keep their their mind on their job and and everyone will be stay will stay safe there as well as here thanks thank you we are also going to share uh information about your website and your facebook page so people can follow up um, for fcs renfrew county and get the information they need people can one one more thing pardon me sure. people can self-report to our agency a request service and they can call one uh 613-735-6866 uh, ask for the referral center whether that's for child protection, developmental needs, or whatever the case is, the referral center will um, direct them to the, the support services that they that would best match the needs presented. If they um, call that number after hours, they will go to a paging company and the paging company will page the worker on duty and have them call, call the family directly. 
Perfect. So I will share that number. So it's 613-735-6866. And you're going to find that in the comments below. 6866. Yes. 6866. Perfect. Thank Kevin, you. thanks for joining us. Um, Kevin, good to see you. In a typical year, we would find you at this time of year at the Canix, um, handing out hats and bagging groceries and talking to people about Bell Let's Talk. Um, Bell Let's Talk is tomorrow. Um, it is an important, um, important. I don't want to say event, but it is an important uh, thing to mark uh, at Garrison Petawawa and for, for a number of community organizations all across. Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about Bell Let's Talk and what's happening? Definitely. <clears throat> so first of all, Julie, thanks for having me. So the 11th annual Bell Let's Talk Day takes place tomorrow. And it is the day where really we drive the national conversation to help reduce the stigma and promote awareness and understanding surrounding mental illness in Canada. It's also the day where a great deal of money is raised that goes towards mental health access, care, and research. So this year with, with COVID-19 affecting every aspect of our lives, the impact of the pandemic on, on people's mental health has been significant to say the least. So the slogan for this year's campaign is appropriately named mental health now more than ever, every action counts. So what the campaign really does is highlights actions, both big and small, that we can all take to help create positive change. Whether you're staying virtually connected with a family member, helping an elderly neighbor with the groceries, or even just taking some time to look after your own mental health, everybody can play a part. So for Bell Let's Talk in previous years, we had a fantastic team of representatives from health promotion, recreation, mental health, the Padres and the PMFRC, that bagged groceries, distributed promotional information about mental health, and were available to talk one-on-one -on -one to patrons at Canex over the lunch hour. But this year with COVID-19 guidelines and, and public health measures, we've turned to online communication to pass on the message about mental health. So some of the other events that are taking place at the garrison this year, we have asked defense team personnel to share their stories around how they look after their own mental health and or others mental, others mental health, as well as some of the successes and the challenges that come with that. These stories and pictures will be posted on our Facebook page on Bell Let's Talk Day. We have encouraged units to have virtual discussions around mental health. We have posted information online in the last few weeks or so, promoting Bell Let's Talk Day, distributing information about mental health and providing resources. Information will be posted on the Garrison Facebook page, the Brigade Facebook page and the Post Facebook page. And then on Bell Let's Talk Day, Bell will donate five cents for every applicable text, call, tweet, TikTok video using hashtag Bell Let's Talk, social media, video view and use of their Facebook frame or Snapchat filter. So we will be encouraging people to do that tomorrow. So Bell Let's Talk 2021 will definitely be different than any of the, the previous years. However, I do feel that we can still make a difference and I, I encourage people to join in on the conversation tomorrow. The one thing I love about Bell Let's Talk is on that one day, it's everywhere. Like you can see it on almost pretty much any, every site that you follow and don't scroll past it. Um, I think that, you know, talking about this year more than ever, every step counts. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit of play on that. And we have so much accumulated knowledge on the call today. Um, every step counts now more than ever. I'm going to give everybody on the call an opportunity to give an insight or a thought about the importance of looking after um, your own mental health and taking those steps. I think we've all sort of referenced it in different ways, but I uh, just wanted to give each person an, an opportunity to give a tip or an insight that they'd like to share. So I'm going to start with Lieutenant Jones, just because you're in my top right corner. Um, I don't know if you are for everybody else, but for you are, you are there. So let's start with you. All right. Um, of course, I guess I want to start by saying that, you know, our mental health influences how we think, how we feel and how we behave in everyday life. Um, it affects how we cope with stress, how we overcome challenges and recover from life setbacks and hardships. Um, your mental health is an, plays an important role in the health of your relationships as well. So just know that your mental health is just as important as your physical health. You know, at different times in our lives, we all ex 
all experience fluctuating different levels of needs related to our mental health. Um, days such as Bellet's talk really provides to us a platform to really talk and uh, break down the stigmas associated with, um, that come with sometimes um, accessing mental health supports. So um, I guess right now too, I'd like to acknowledge the impact that COVID has had on our, uh, has had on our, an impact on our everyday life. Um, you know, and you know, maybe you're noticing that there's been added an increase or added stressors and challenges that are influencing how you're coping, your relationships and how you're just functioning in daily life. So I guess ultimately what I'm getting to is please know if you're struggling and re require support, I really encourage you to reach out, whether that be a friend, family, um, mental health provider or doctor, you know, um, you know, please reach out. And it does take courage sometimes to reach out. And that's why days like Bellet's talk is so important that we break down that and we really have a conversation about the importance of taking care of our mental health. So of course, I'm going to, um, uh, you know, uh, put it out that for CAF members, you know, warrior support is there, you can reach us at 4600. And there's always there someone there to talk uh, during work hours. And of course, there's other resources and community resources. That's why this is so great that we're all here that we can like share those resources so that um, when there is a need that uh, you can reach out. For support. So. Thank you. Uh, Chris, over to you. Thanks. So echoing a lot of what Ashley just said, but one of the things that comes to mind with our um, mental health and our healthy relationships is be mindful of whether or not you're losing your spark. You know, if people say to you, oh, you're not the same, or there's something missing in our relationship, we really need to get back on track. Do that. Get back on track. Get your, get your spark back. And if you're a family member, reach out to us and we can uh, help you through the mental health team or just have a conversation with the uh, family advocacy coordinator and we can help get that spark back so you can, you can continue to enjoy where your relationship was at when you thought it was good, where you, you can continue to enjoy your mental health where it was at when you thought it was good. So don't let your sparkle uh, get dulled. Uh, reach out to us. There's lots of us in the community that can um, help reignite that spark for you. Thank you. Jancy? Um, just a reminder that mental health um, encompasses our whole person. So it affects our emotional, spiritual, physical well-being. So I encourage you to all try and find one new different way to take care of yourself, whether maybe that's going out for a walk, you know, maybe throwing some snowballs out there, um, reading a book or reading something you never would have read, or trying to cook if you've never tried to cook, just something different that maybe will be taking care of yourself in a new and adventurous way that you can incorporate in your daily life. Thank you. Claudia. I think I would say that, you know, Bell Let's Talk Day is one day where there's a lot of importance about um, talking about mental health. But if you're not ready tomorrow, just remember, you can still reach out at any point in time. These services will always be here for you. Perfect. Kevin? Being from the physical fitness side of the house, I've always recognized the importance of physical fitness. In recent years, I, I've come to recognize that in the very least, mental fitness is just as important. There's also a huge connection between our physical health and our mental health. So just like physical fitness, mental fitness is something that you can work on. And when you do spend time working on your mental health, you're gonna look better, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna be more productive at work, and you're gonna live a longer, healthier, and happier life. Perfect, Paul? As disruptive and as challenging um, COVID and the certain circumstances now are for the adults, it's often very, very much so the same for children. And children often don't have the language or the capacity to fully be able to express how disrupt how this disruption is affecting them. That may manifest itself in behaviors. It may manifest itself in challenges of other, of other types. And with the, the amount of homeschooling that has been going on, people are in tighter circles. And it's really important to reach out for the help to 
explore other ways of expressing emotions, feelings, to identify them, and to, as everybody else has said, look after the whole package, the, the physical as well as the mental. And I would encourage you to explore the spiritual side of your well being in terms of the whole package. When you talk about uh, let's talk and reaching out, I, I know that there are people in your circle who are always the people who get that call. Um, so when people talk, there's always someone there to listen. And usually it's the same person in that friend group that listens to pretty much everybody. And I think it's so important for that person who does the listening, for that person who it becomes the, the sounding board and the ear that people to go to, to look after your own well-being. Um, and to recognize that you don't always have to be the one to listen. Sometimes you need to reach out too. So that self-care is so important for, for everybody on every side of that, because that, that compassion fatigue and that caretaker um, takes on a lot of stress and they need uh, self-care as well. Sir, I'm going to give you the last word. Um, talk about Bell, let's talk or tips or anything that you would like to share uh, before we go. Okay. Thanks, Julie. I'll just go off what uh, Chris said there about losing your sparkle and, uh, I think it was back late, late November, Dana from our team, actually, we were at a training event together and it was the end, end of the day on a Friday. And she said, Ian, you don't, you don't seem yourself today. You, you seem, you seem a little bit down or, and I, and I sort of thought about it. And we used to have like a very public face where we show whether it's stoic or happy or cheerful. And then we have kind of a private face that we don't always show. And maybe she saw a bit of that private face. So I certainly reflected on that and said, yeah, there were some things going on. Um, and that perhaps I was trying to do too much and, and trying to make everything perfect. Um, and although it's good to be perfect, um, it's also good to be good. Um, and so although we're supposed to talk, we also need to listen. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's both. And uh, in terms of mental health, I mean, there's a lot going on in the world. And the, the source of a problem in a relationship can be um, anything. And it can be a bunch of things. What I'll offer, though, is, is if it's work. So if things are going on at work and you're mad about work, uh, but you don't show your madness at work and you bring it home, you know, that's probably not healthy. And what you should probably do is resolve the problem at work. And there's lots of resources to do that. And it's not easy. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, but, um, you know, as, as you're doing your check-in and you're saying, hey, what's, what's going on in my world that's making me feel this way? Um, if it's about work, well, let's, let's fix it at work. And there's lots of ways to do it. Um, so I'm not saying that that'll fix everything. And we have certainly said during this crisis, as, as the chain of command, we do not want to be the, the, the problem that makes something a true crisis. We know we cause stress. Um, that's, you know, work can be, it is stressful. Um, but, you know, please, if you're, if, if, if you're mad about work or you're stressed about work or you're trying to juggle the responsibilities of teaching kids at home and getting through and try, trying to be perfect for them and at work, um, you know, hey, let's, let's sort it out at work so it doesn't become a problem at home. And if there are problems, it's better to talk about it early. And, uh, you know, and then we can bring in all these great experts and who have all these great resources when it's still lots of time just to get back to the green. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks for having us today. That was great. Sir, can I, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you one last question. Okay. Um, I know, I, I always say that I, I'm not going to do this, but I think it's an important message. And I think it's an important message to come from Colonel Clark. Um, there's a lot of military families and a lot of military members in this area that are afraid to reach out because they think it's going to affect their career or it's going to affect um, their standing at work. Can you just talk to that, please? Okay, sure. It's, um, that's a, a great question. It's a tough question. Um, I think there's I think a lot of times, you. yeah, and I'll speak to, you know, we, we talked about private and, and public. We, we don't want to have problems, right? No one wants to have problems. And, and we like to show to our boss at work that everything's fine. And there's stigma, especially with uh, things like fam family violence. Absolutely. Um, you know, if things, if the MPs have been involved, then, you know, I won't lie. There could be career issues. Um, you know, if, if, if someone goes to prison, um, you know, that is absolutely going to have an effect on their career. Um, but for, for the things in the sort of yellow and the orange on the spectrum, um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to cause a problem to the career. And the idea is to, to get help early. Um, and certainly as a, as a CEO, I've, I've uh, unfortunately faced this a few times and, um, you know, compassion is one of the words we have. I mean, we are guided by policy and guided by law, but we also have compassion and understanding. And the aim is to get people back to that green and, and to carry on. And I would just say that the, the sooner people like don't don't be afraid to come forward 
Um, because if you're, if things are going on and you're bottling it in because you don't want to either ruin your, your career or your spouse's career, then eventually it's going to get to that red area, which is where no one wants to be. Um, so it, it doesn't end a career to, to seek help from anyone on the team. Absolutely not. And even if there's issues that, that come to light, like the M M MPs get called, that, that doesn't mean the career's over. It does not mean that at all. Yes, there's going to be discussions and it's going to be awkward. Yes. Will, will, will it be embarrassing? Yes, absolutely. I won't, I won't try to sugarcoat it, but it doesn't mean the career is over and we'll work together. Um, and that's why we have the team. The team is here to, to help restore relationships and get people able to work because they know, as, as Paul said earlier, that things are going good at home. So, so yeah, it is not, we will absolutely work with you. Thank you. So Bell at Stock Day is tomorrow. If there is something that is on your heart, on your mind that you need to talk about, um, like Claudia said, tomorrow is not the only day you can do it, but tomorrow is the day that, that we have that reminder. Um, every person on this call, you haven't said it, but I'm going to speak for you. Um, if there is somebody who is sitting at home and you are watching this discussion and you are afraid to reach out because you don't know if you're going to the right place or you don't want to bother anybody, Call us anyway. Um, everybody on this call, I'm sure, would repeat the message that we would rather have you reach out um, and point you in the right direction and do that warm handover than have you sit there and not get the help that you need. Um, thank you all. Bell Let's Talk is tomorrow. Um, we may not be ha handing out the fancy hats like Kevin has, but it's still an important thing. And uh, we will be back, I'm sure, by next year with something just as fancy. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.